Welcome to another Bible study, family. It's good to be with you again on this Wednesday evening of May, May the 10th of 2023. We are grateful to Almighty God for everything that He is doing and will do on our behalf. Always, our prayers are with you and your family and your and we just pray that you are doing well and, and continue to trust in God who has all power in his hands. We love and appreciate you and, and count it a blessing to have this opportunity to share the word of God with those of you who take the time to tune in and be a part of, of this Bible study. Again, we are so appreciative and thankful. And we've been talking about Peter and the, and the transformation process that's been taking place with him. And we're going to continue with that. We're going to just watch the progress that he's making and, and the transformation as it completely takes place. We'll see that Peter is not the same man. And I think that's what I would like to title this particular Bible study of, of Peter. He's not the same man. Now, here are some scriptures I'd like for you to follow us with. A couple of scriptures. is Review Acts chapter 3, verse 6 through 8th verse. Acts chapter 3, verse 6 through 8. Acts chapter 5, verse 11 through 15. Acts chapter 5, verse 11 through 15. Acts chapter 9. Verse 36 through the 41st verse. Acts chapter 9, verse 36 through 41. And then take it back to the Old Testament. Zechariah, Acts chapter, I mean chapter 4, verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Next will be the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verses 14 through 18. Chapter 14, verses 14 through 18. And then Acts, chapter 8, verse 17 to the 24th verse. Acts, chapter 8, verse 17 to the 24th verse. And Acts, chapter 1, verses 7 through 8. Acts, chapter 1, verse 7 through 8. And then 1 Corinthians, chapter 2. Verse 3 through 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 through 5. And that would be, praise the Lord, our last verse that we tried to cover this evening. So let us have a word of prayer and ask God's blessing upon this teaching. Father, we are thankful. We are so appreciative of you. And just the opportunity to sit here and be a part of this Bible study is such a blessing. And we are grateful. We come, Lord, to totally dependent upon you. We ask, Father, that the precious, greatest teacher there is, which is the Holy Spirit, would speak through my lips and touch your people and inform your people and give us your insight and your wisdom. So we'll be so careful to simply say thank you. We also touch and agree bind any spirit, anything that would try to hinder this word from going through. And we pray that this word will go forth and fall upon good ground. Let none of our words, none of the words, Lord, we speak fall to the ground, but be received in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Peter's transformation. I'd like to re-emphasize the subject. This is not the same man. Surely Peter has come a long way. We notice that Peter was always a, a very outgoing and boastful person. Peter would say things ahead of time in haste. He would tell the Lord, even though everyone would leave you, I will never forsake you. We know the story, though. We just revealed a little where Peter actually denied Christ three times. So Peter was the one who had the, 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 the outgoing uh, personality and spirit. And Peter was the one who challenged Jesus to allow him to walk on water, and he did so. But Peter, that same Peter, had, a, had some 
what I would refer to as just some inconsistencies. We see that he denied Christ. We see that, you know, he, he, he just simply caved in. But after that experience, the transformation process was taking place on behalf of Peter. Peter was, was beginning to operate on a whole different level. We think about that when we look at Acts chapter 3. Well, you know the story of the, the man who was lame from his birth, sitting begging. And when Peter those came up, he expected to receive something from Peter. And, 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 and sure enough, he was begging for money, but Peter had something a little bit more power, no, a, a, a lot more powerful than what money could achieve. And if you look at verse 6, it says, Then Peter said to the lame man, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. I'm just here to say this is not the same man. And the lame man, and he, verse 8, was leaping, stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful, wonderful experience this man had. What a wonderful encounter he had with one of God's children who was undergoing a transformation process. Remember that I shared with you in Acts chapter 5 where Peter was transforming to the point where just the power of God was upon him. And we look at verse 11, Acts chapter 5, verses 11 through 15 says, In great fear, came upon all the church and as many as heard these things and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch and the rest does no man join himself to them but the people magnified them and believers were more added to the Lord multitudes both of men and women insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And you tell me, this does not sound nothing like the old Peter where here he is walking in such a powerful anointing upon him and upon himself there where he is literally passing by people they, and they, they, they're referencing that his shadow was anointed. But we simply know there was a, a, a great anointing radiating from Peter that will people just get close enough and tap into that power and they were healed. So this I declare to you and I myself is that this is not the same man. And I pray that that's what they should be saying about us. Let me give you another example. Go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9 and look at verse 36 through the 41st verse. We're going to see where Peter's going to have a great miracle, a great powerful demonstration of the power of God. Verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And as far as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. And when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. 
the same Peter who was afraid of that fire, the same Peter who, you know, denied knowing Jesus, is now kneeling down next to a dead woman, Dorcas or Tabitha, and saying, Arise. And, and look what happened in verse 40. She opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. The woman who was dead opened her eyes. This same Peter that was afraid and was hiding and, 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 and was scared and denied Christ is now raising the dead. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. There is no secret what God can do when he has a yielded vessel. Yes, like the old saying is that God is not looking for ability. He's looking for availability. Let me say that again. He's not looking for our ability. He's looking for availability. And Peter has now made himself uh, open and available to the things of God. So he kneels down and pray, and then turns to the body and said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes, and when, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And verse 41, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up and when he had called the saints and widows presented her alive can you imagine a few minutes ago this lady was dead and now as a result of encountering an anointed man of god who is undergoing a transformation process is now back alive and fellowshipping with her family man my god my god Yes, this is Peter, and I'm declaring to you is that he is not the same man. Now, understand something. Zechariah chapter, if you go with me, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, is in the Old Testament. Hopefully you marked it. You can always come back to it. We need to realize something as we go forth in this season of ours. It's going to require us to, to have uh, another mantle I have. A heavier mantle, or a, 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 a stronger anointing, a more corporate power. It, this season, it, it won't be just normal. It's going to require more of us, and we're going to have to go through. And 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 look what Zechariah said. Basically, one of the Old Testament prophets, Zechariah, chapter four, verse six. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, God wants to work through us. God wants to do things. For us. God wants to, to operate through us on a whole nother level that we are not experiencing. But it's my prayer that we will. It's my prayer that we're going to graduate. It's my prayer that we're going to start seeing things, wonders and signs and miracles. We pray that they just become the norm. Whenever we gather, they'll just be normal. Yeah, what would be abnormal is that we don't see signs and wonders and miracles. But the thing that this scripture is telling us, basically, in essence, is that we can't force it, and we realize that. We can't make it happen. Nope. We are dependent upon the precious Holy Spirit operating through us. Look what Jesus said in Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verses 18. He said, If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now say with pastor, say anything. Yes, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now we know that this has been prefaced, has to be prefaced with the fact that it has to be according to God's will. It has to be in alignment with his will. You can't go contrary to the word of God or contrary to God's will and expecting to receive. You have to be in alignment with his will. Verse 15, if you love me, there you go. Keep my commandments. Verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, 
that he may that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and you've heard pastor say this time and time again the world can't receive what we have access to we have access to the fullness of the precious holy spirit now we're going to take advantage of every crook and nanny every available uh, thing that the Lord has for us, we're going to take advantage of it. Yes. We don't want to, 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 to forfeit access that God has made available that we have as his children through the precious comforter, through the precious Holy Spirit. We want every available means of access to be open to us individually and also as a church family. Can you say amen? We have something, family. We have or we have an opportunity to access the third trinity of God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Right here upon this earth, we have the option and the power and, and the access to, uh, uh, to, 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 to reach out and tap into a power source that's available to us, not to the world, but to us. So it would be what a shame for us as a church not to fully tap into what God has for us. So it's going to require more than just coming to church and, and just, just waiting on pastor or someone else to generate what's needed. Well, no, we're going to have to come prayed of it. And I think that's where we're falling short. We'll come ready to get built up, but no, we have to. We need to bring bring the little timber with you. Yes, we need. We you you need to have something that you can throw on the fire, and we shouldn't always start from zero, ground zero. We should come prepared. We should come with an attitude of worship. Hallelujah! We should come. We should come. Praise and worship should should be. And not an individual things just for the associates and, and the spouses. But no, the church, when it's time for praise and worship, the church should be involved. All of us should be involved. All of us should, should enter into his courts with praise and what? Thanksgiving. So the world cannot receive what we have access to. We have access to the third trinity which is the precious Holy Spirit, which is just as much God as God is God and Jesus is God. And we have access. And keep in mind, the world cannot receive him, but we can. For he said in verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. My Lord, my Lord, why is it that we're not seeing as much as we need to see? Yes, I decree and declare to you that I believe in God that when we come prayed up and when we come in the right frame of mind, in the right spirit, that God will show us and, and give us more manifestations of his power, much more, family much more. And that corporate worship is going to be so important as we give and allow God to move and man himself and show himself strong through the precious Holy Spirit. Verse 18 says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So we have access, family. Now that, that, that gets pastor attention. God is not holding back on us. He's not holding out on us. We, it is us. We have to prepare our temples, and we have to make sure that we're, we're prepared. We have to make sure that we're prayed up. We have to make sure that we, we this is not, the, 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 you know, since last Sunday, this is not the first time we're seeing another scripture. We have to meditate in the word. We have to be prayed up, family in order for God to do what he needs to do. And the most wonderful thing that we have, the advantage that we have, is that the world cannot receive what we have, what's been made available to us, and that is the precious Holy Spirit. 
I gave you an example if you look in Acts chapter 8 here where there was like a sorcerer that wanted to try to purchase and, 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 and give uh, money on behalf of trying to receive this thing, this gift which is provided to us, the precious Holy Spirit, this man is trying to buy. He's trying to pay for it. Acts chapter 8, look at verse 17 through 24. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So this man is watching Peter those pray for people, and, and Peter those uh, laying hands on people, and, the, and those individuals were receiving the Holy Ghost. And verse 18, when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Look at this. When he saw that, wow, you can lay hands on the apostle, and the apostles can lay hands on others, and the Holy Ghost will be given them. Man, he, he reached in his pocket, pulled out what he had, and was willing to find more to get money to get this power. He's willing to buy this power. Saying, look at verse 19, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. And I like to emphasize that the gift of God, the gift of God, we're going to have to uh, clean house. We're going to have to sweep the door steps. We're going to have to search and make sure there's nothing that we're doing or not doing that's, that's, that's limiting God from manifesting himself fully among our midst. Yes, yes, we want to make sure that the precious Holy Spirit, which is a gift, like I said, we don't have to raise money for the Holy Spirit to come and fellowship with us. We just have to have pure hearts and clean what, hands. And I believe that's the biggest thing we have to realize is that you can't, you don't want to live a certain way during the week and then just think you can just run up into church on Sunday and, and God feels welcoming and, and, and everything goes fine. No, we have to live a lifestyle of having a pure heart and clean hands. And what we have access to as a gift, this man is willing to pay money for the precious Holy Spirit. Look at verse 21. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. And I love that. Thy heart is not right. And I just said, what do we need? I believe we need to make sure that all, as we gather that those who have a pure heart and clean hands will be gathering. And that we come with the focus, one focus in mind, and that is to, to, to be in the presence of God. To let him know that he is welcome. He is welcome. He is welcome in this place. Can you say amen? Look what verse 22 says as Peter begins to, to declare. Yeah, Peter declared that thou have no part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God if perhaps... The thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the, bond, in the bond of iniquity. And then Simon said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken shall come upon me. So Peter said, Man, you, ain't got, you don't have any part with this. You're trying to pay for something that God has given to his children as a gift. Look how desperate this man wanted this power. We have to come to with a, a heart that's desperate. Yes, we will find the Lord when we search for him with all of our heart. Yes, with all of our heart. And here we see Simon. He saw that the apostles received the precious Holy Ghost, conferred it the Holy Spirit to others. Boy, he real quickly wanted to pull out some money 
and say, sell me your secret. Show me how you, you did that. How much money do you want? I can see Solomon said, name your price, man. Name your price. How much do you want? And, and when you look at it in, in, in the Message Bible, it says that Peter said to H-E-L-L -L, with your money and you, along with it. I'm just reading the translation. This is, this is, this is from the mes Message Bible. <laughs> and that man, Simon, quickly wanted him to, please, man, uh, pray for me that none of this stuff you, you, you're speaking comes to pass. Yes, Peter said, oh, you, you're trying to buy a gift that you don't have access to. Now, there we go, family. We, we have to stop and reevaluate where we are and how we go forward. It's because we have access to something that the world does not have access to, and that is the precious, precious, gentle Holy Spirit. And I think it's time that we take access uh, and, 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 and take advantage of, of the privilege that has been given us, the accessibility of the Trinity, of the third part of the precious Trinity, the Holy Spirit, we have access to. Amen. It's like someone having money in a bank, but they don't even utilize it. They go out and scrounge and work around, and they can have millions and millions of dollars in the bank, but they don't have don't realize that all they have to do is access it. Just make access to the money and their whole life will change. And I'm saying this too. Simon the sorcerer, he wanted access to this power. Peter said, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. He is a person. He is the precious third part of the Trinity. And he is a gift to us. And we have to make sure that what we do is accommodate him every time we gather. Yes, and you do that. You can help pastor. You can help co-pastor. You can help the associates out. When you come to church ready, come to church prayed up, come to church having read the Bible, not just since last Sunday, come to church prepared. That's where we are. And I believe as a, as a body, we do so, we will see some sure manifestation of God's power and demonstration. Amen. And when Jesus was getting ready to ascend into heaven, Acts chapter 1, verse 7, he was getting ready to he'd been walking among his disciples and others. Over 500 people saw Jesus after the resurrection. But now he's getting ready to ascend back to heaven. And before he leaves, this is what he says to his disciples. Some said unto him, the, them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own power. They asked him, Lord, is you going to restore the kingdom right now? Is it time to restore the kingdom? He said, it's not for you or I to know. All right. But it's under the power of the Father. But look at what he said in verse 8. But ye shall, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. My Lord, my God. We, we need just we stop and pause and say, Precious Holy Spirit, reveal to us as a people, as a church, as a ministry. You are available, and we want all of you. We need all of you. We don't need some of you. We need the fullness of all of you. The times that we live in, Lord, we need your fullness to be manifest among us. So Jesus said, they would receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then ye shall be witnesses unto both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria unto the uttermost part of the earth. That's where we are, family. We, the season we're living in and, 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 and the times that we're facing, people... It just can't be church as usual. No. There needs to be power demonstrated by God's people. Yes, as we gather, we gather with the intent and expectations that we are going to be met in the house by God. 
that we're going to be able to enter into his presence and dwell there. That we will be able to see manifestations of signs and wonders and miracles take place among us. Can you say amen? Amen. So we see here something is happening to Peter. He's not the same man because not only has he repented and not only has he changed, but he has received an infilling of the precious Holy Spirit. It's not a one-time event. It can happen over and over again. But he has developed a strong relationship with the precious Holy Spirit to the point where Peter, Simon Peter, the one that was cursing people out, saying that I don't know the man called Jesus, is now raising the dead. This same Peter is now walking through the streets and people are putting sick folk in the streets so that Peter can just walk by and his anointing is just putting him, just falling close enough to fall within his shadow. People are getting healed. My Lord, my Lord. Yes, Lord. Show us, Father, what we need to do and how we, we, can, we can accommodate you even better. And that's our prayer. And you look at our last verse for the day, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 through 5. You see here, and this, this is an example of Paul. Paul said, listen, listen, you know, our teaching, our preaching and things like that is not about trying to be fancy or, or, or use big words or, or, or who can hoop the best. It's not about that. Paul, first of all, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, which is our last scripture for the day. He said, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words. My preaching was not with enticing words. Some preachers can just bring that thing and, and speak it eloquently and and, and, and can just, just pull up words that sound so good and, 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 and whatever he says. But he said, Paul said, that's why now I'm, I'm not coming. That's not my speech. And, that, and my preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom. There you go. My, the words that he's preaching are not coming from man, but they're coming from God. So he said, my words are not enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and of the power. In demonstration in the spirit and of power. And I believe that the season we're in, that the time that we're in, that the things that are ahead of us, it's going to require us not to use fancy words based upon man's wisdom, but... It's going to require us to demonstrate. Say that with him. Say demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, we're going to have to be, uh, you know, you just have that little thing they do at school, show and tell. Well, uh, well, as, as a church, as we go forward and as individual believers, as we go forward, we're going to have to tell and show. It, it's going to have to be a demonstration of the power of God. And whatever it requires of us, if it requires of us that we sacrifice more, if it requires of us, if we have to, you know, push away the plate more, whatever it might be, family, we do not want to uh, uh, take lightly the fact that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power, my Lord, that worketh within us. So this is not about using fancy words. This is not about uh, just trying to impress others. No. We're moving to a season where the world is going to expect demonstration of the spirit and of the power of God. So we see that with, with Peter's transformation. And we see that with us. Is that, that your faith... And the verse 5 says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. Our faith will not stand in the wisdom of men, but of the power of God. 
And I pray that for our church. And I want you to pray along with Pastor. Yes, we need to have some show and tell and some tell and show at the church. We need to have that not only corporately, but when we come together corporately with everyone on the same page and everyone on this, out to the same expectation and pursuing the same goal. Where it's not about us when we show up. It's all about God. And I believe that as we, as we move forward, just like Peter, Peter went through a lot of talking and, and so forth, but man, after that transformation process, we see that Peter is a totally different man to the point where he's raising the dead, grabbing people by the hand, laying pe people are leaping up, walking, leaping, and praising God. And, and they're, they're lining people up by the streets where his shadow will just pass over. My God, isn't that something? So there's much more that, that God has available to us. Remember something. We have access to the precious Holy Spirit whom the world cannot receive, but we can. So you do that. You, you help pastor and co-pastor and associates. You, you help us out. You help the praise team out. When they're up there singing and praising, Let's do the same. Let's get involved. Let's become actively involved and, 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 and allow God to move among us. Let's make our worship service as a, as, as a accommodative to God as we can. We will extend to him a personal invitation every Sunday. Lord, you are coming among people who love you and who are seeking after you. And our heart is pulling after you, Father. You said if we seek you, We'll find you if we search for you with all our heart. So give us, Lord, that desire as the heart panteth after the water brooks. Lord, let our soul panteth after thee. So I decree and declare that when you look at the transformation of Peter, he indeed is not the same man. And I'm praying that testimony will be for each of us. We will be different as a result of our encounter that we're going to be having with God. Can you say amen? I, I say the glory be to what God is going to do. And we'll just pray real quickly that God realize, Father, we love you. We're thankful for everything you've done. Thankful for everything that you're going to do. And Father, we extend to you a personal invitation. We pray that you will enlighten our hearts, give us your insight and your wisdom, so that, Lord, we want you to be totally welcome. We want you, Father, to be able to come and have a seat among us at Anointed Ground Church. So we ask you, Father, you, Lord, help us to accommodate you to the point where you are our guest. And we, Lord, are just your children, happy to be in the presence of their Father. Hallelujah. We love you. We thank you. And we decree and declare, Father God, as we go forward, you would receive us in the fullness of all that you desire to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Say this to the past. Say, not the same man. And I pray you can say that for yourself. I'm not going to be the same man or woman. We're going to be different as God is transformed in our lives. Can you say amen? Well, God bless you, family. I pray that, you know, God will keep you and as always, continue to smile upon you as he has upon continuing to smile upon us. So to God be the glory. To God be the praise for everything he has done. We love you and again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part. Share and let others know what God is doing. To him be all the glory and praise. God bless you.